Welcome back to Think Tech here at the uh, two o'clock block on a given Thursday. And you know what that means, the military in Hawaii. Uh, we wanna connect with the military. We wanna understand what they're doing and how they relate to the community. We wanna meet the people. And today we're meeting uh, Timothy Young, Captain Timothy Young, US Navy, uh, who is the commander of uh, Barking Sands. The, and that is the uh, Pacific Missile Range Facility. PMRF in Kauai, western, northwestern point of Kauai, I guess. Hi, Captain Young. Nice to see your smiling face. Good afternoon, Jay. Uh, thank you so much uh, for this opportunity. It's a, it's a pleasure to join you. Yeah, well, we want to know more about Barking Sands. Uh, and I was saying before the show that your website is impressive because it gives us a lot of information. It tells us the history, which I find fascinating. It tells us what you're doing and what the opportunities are and a connection with Kauai and the community. Um, valuable. This is, that's, that's a transparency that we should all appreciate. Um, and I guess it's intentional, eh? Indeed it is, yes. We, we, uh, we're proud of what we do here at PMRF. Uh, We've often been called the crown jewel of the Pacific uh, from uh, four stars and other leaders in the region at uh, Indo-Pacific Command. And uh, we have a very important mission here, uh, but uh, we do cherish our relationship with the, with the community and uh, um, our partnerships here and uh, uh, all the things uh, that we do to keep uh, this part of Hawaii the special place that it is. Well, you know, it has a, a very interesting history you know, back in the 1920s. Um, it was, uh, let's see, I'm just looking at your website. It was acquired by the Kahala Sugar Cup, Kahala Sugar, oh, Kekaha, sorry, Kekaha Sugar Company and became a runway. And that was the beginning of its, um, you know, its use as a, an airport and then later a missile range. So what is it to have a missile range? Um, that differs a lot from just an airport and I guess this happened in the 50s when it became a, um, a U.S. It was it was a, it was it was Bonham Air Force Base, um, named for Major Carlos Bonham, commanding officer of the fighter squadron in the Territorial Air National Guard. Um, but then it became uh, 1950, oh, 50, 64, It was transferred to the Navy Department. I guess that's when it got serious. Yeah, that's correct. So the uh, uh, after World War II, as you mentioned, the Air Force took it over. And then uh, in the early 60s, um, the Navy and its testing uh, uh, needed a, uh, uh, a space where there was a, a lot of sea space, a lot of airspace unencumbered by everything else. Uh, um, the Regulus missile was getting tested at the time. Uh, and so uh, it was transferred over to the Navy in the early 60s. Uh, and um, we've had it ever since. Uh, we've gone through a couple iterations of who the ultimate uh, uh, element is in charge of the base right now. We're under a, a Commander Pacific Fleet. And uh, we've kept the moniker, the name of Pacific Missile Ring. Uh, but there's definitely so many th more things that we do here. Um, you know, when, when, when the question is, what is Pacific Missile Range Facility? Um, the formal answer is that uh, we are the world's largest instrumented multi-environment range capable of supporting subsurface, surface air, uh, and uh, space testing uh, and training operations. Um, so kind of those who are familiar with the with military training ranges, I kind of use the analogy uh, of uh, of a stadium uh, or a playing field, um, and so we we use uh, this area, this space, which we can extend out to two million square nautical miles, uh, which is about half the size of uh, the continental United States, um, and we use that uh, that area for for testing and training, and we can. Uh, um, well, have the capability to replay those events uh, um, for our customers and for uh, for all those who use the range. Yeah, you know, it, it may be remote, and we should talk about that, but uh, it's not really remote for the Navy because you get plenty of traffic coming and going. You have an airfield there and, and aircraft uh, land and take off all the time. It's it's not really quiet, is it? Well, it, uh, it depends who you ask. Uh, we have something going on the range uh, almost every single day of the year. 
Uh, it may not be apparent to the naked eye or the ear, but uh, there's there's something happening. Some uh, some uh, element of improving uh, our nation's defense, whether it's readiness or a system getting tested. Um, uh, so um, it it may not always be a noisy aircraft flying overhead at the at the, uh, low altitudes, um, but uh, the, there's something happening here all the time. Mm. And yet, at the same time, I'm telling you, I stayed at the uh, the cottages there um, a few years ago, and um, on the back end of the cottage overlooked this huge, wonderful beach, and then beyond the beach, there was Niihau. I don't think I ever saw a Niihau before that day, uh, but it was really a sight to see. It was it was beautiful. It was right out there, and and um, I was very impressed with not only the isolation, but the purity of it, and then your respect for the environment and the respect for the, the cultural heritage at Niihau. Uh, ever get over there? Because I know you have some kind of radar facility on Niihau. We do have a couple of uh, um, assets over there, uh, um, some electronic warfare structures, uh, and we have a, a, a partnership with a landowner out there as well. Uh, and uh, the, the, the Niihau is a, um, you know, it's, they call it the Forbidden Island, but uh, it is spectacular out there. And uh, uh, I have, I had had the opportunity to go set foot on it. Uh, um, and uh, it is quite a sight uh, from the beaches of PMRF. So was it desired duty uh, to be at the Barking Sands? Is it the kind of duty where you, you put it on your wish list all the time and try to get there throughout your career, and then one day you get there? I, it, it definitely was for me towards the latter part of my career when I found out what's out here. But uh, we kind of have a, um, one of those things that uh, you don't want to talk about it too much. Otherwise, you'll create an unnatural uh, uh, affinity for it across the whole force. So um, uh, it, it, if everybody knew what it was like out here, there'd be a, outside the gate uh, of uh, Navy Navy officers like me trying to get in here and surf here, but uh, it's definitely hands down uh, uh, the best. You know, it's the most beautiful place I've ever been. But uh, it's really uh, the people uh, that I get to serve with here and uh, the community that I get to serve in and serve with it uh, that make the difference. Yeah, can you talk about the uh, staff you've got, and and for that matter, uh, your website is is replete with uh, references to jobs and all. Um, so what sort of a staff do you have? What, what kind of specialties do you have within that staff? How many civilian, how many, um, you know, uh, active duty? Um, and um, and what, what kind of jobs are available for, you know, Hawaii residents? So uh, that, that's, uh, that's a great question, Jay. I appreciate you bringing that up. We, we do have, we are a Navy installation, uh, but uh, our active duty Navy footprint is fairly small. We have about 100 sailors here. We have about uh, 100 government civilians, and then uh, close to 700 contractors that work on the base. Uh, and so the total population uh, of, a, of about a thousand. Um, and, you know, most of the civilian workforce here, uh, uh, they come from uh, multi-generational families from either Kauai or Oahu. Uh, very proud to say that uh, a lot of them have technical backgrounds, highly qualified, um, and uh, a lot of them are at the, the 20, 30 year mark of their employment here. Uh, and so, you know, we we uh, we endeavor uh, to uh, it, it, it's beneficial for us to have a workforce that comes uh, locally. Uh, as um, I think. Uh, most of us know that if we uh, hire someone from the mainland, there's a potential for uh, a flight risk, if you will, or for them to leave shortly thereafter uh, for whatever reason. Uh, but uh, it's a very, uh, very uh, um, great thing to say that uh, most of our folks here are, are uh, local Kauaians or local Hawaiians, and uh, um, uh, they are, they are uh, uh, I couldn't do our mission here without it. We're, yeah. we're in a local community, um, obviously in times that's not COVID, uh, we like to get out uh, and volunteer in the local community in our, in our schools um, uh, and volunteering and mentoring in math and science and the other STEM 
programs uh, just to kind of uh, continue to facilitate that partnership. Oh, it sounds like the uh, shipyard in um, Pearl Harbor. A multi-generational, you know, people, I, my wife's family have been working there for years and years. I know a lot of people, uh, you know, whose families have been working there for years and years, integrated as part of the community that way. And that's a good life, you know. So um, isolation doesn't trouble you being, it's very isolated. I mean, geographically from many population center and for that matter, from, from Lihui, it's a long way. Um, but is it, does that make you read a lot of books and so forth? I wish I had time to read a lot of books, uh, um, but uh, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's all relative. Um, some people love it. I love it out here. It's, uh, and it, you know, it's not quite as isolated as you think. There's so many things to do here on the island of Kauai. And that's what we try to tell our new folks that come here is, uh, you know, get, uh, get out of the office, get out of your rooms, go experience all the beautiful, phenomenal things that Kauai has to offer, whether that's hiking up in uh, the state parks up in Kokei, where it's typically 20 degrees cooler than it is here on the west side, um, uh, or, or exploring the North Shore, uh, just the multitude of activities out on the water. Uh, I mean, it just uh, uh, it just doesn't get any better than uh, than Kauai, and I'll take that uh, that remote and isolated characterization any day. Uh, and then, of course, everything that's happened with the past year, I think the vast majority of us living out here on the west side would argue there is absolutely no better place to be than uh, than right here where we are. Yeah, and, and the numbers are good. The COVID numbers are good in Kauai for many reasons. I mean, I remember you, you talk about cocaine and uh, I remember this hiking trail called Aba Afa Puhi um, in, the, in the rim uh, around cocaine. It's the most beautiful trail in all the islands there. It's just yes. a fabulous place to walk. So, yep. and, then, and I guess it's not too far away. But let's talk about the technology. I mean, you, you know, this is steeped in technology. It's always been steeped in technology. It was organized to do technology. I mean, and I'm sure that missiles are only part of it, but uh, I wonder what, you know, to the extent you can talk about it, what kind of technology have you got going? And, and if I'm a technology nut, uh, you know, what would I, what would I want to study uh, to understand this, you know, the activities you have there? So I think when it, uh, certainly when it comes to, uh, uh, the Department of Defense, if you could pick a, uh, a weapon system or a capability, it's uh, most likely being tested here uh, at PMRF. It has been at one point or will be at one point. Uh, currently uh, on, on the base, we have uh, uh, Raytheon is here testing their latest technologies for radars that are going to be going on uh, uh, the latest Navy destroyers called the Spy-6. Um, we have uh, uh, one of our most frequent customers is the Missile Defense Agency. They'll come out uh, several times a year uh, and test uh, their latest capabilities when it comes to, to uh, defending the homeland, um, uh, whether that's uh, firing a simulated target uh, or firing the, uh, the interceptor itself. And then, of course, uh, all the... Uh, Units uh, in the Navy and other branches of service will come out uh, on the range, whether that's underwater, on the surface, or in the air, uh, and hone their skills and their readiness, um, uh, testing uh, their latest uh, tactics, techniques, and procedures out on the range. There's really no other place in the world better to do it uh, than right here uh, off the coast of Kauai. Yeah, the operative word being testing. So that's, that's probably central in your mission to test the technologies in, in various uh, weapon systems and so, um, um, reconnaissance and defense systems and so forth uh, right there um, and very valuable. So, yeah. you know, one thing that struck me is that the Navy runs this and you as a, as a Navy captain, you run it and it's a Navy managed facility, if you will. And it's been that way since uh, 1964. Um, but query, you know, uh, doesn't the Air Force have a role in all of this? The Air Force has all kinds of missile systems and weapons systems that are totally relevant to, you know, the testing we are talking about. Where is the Air Force in this picture? Well, um, 
they're probably at the club as usual, but uh, <laughs> no, I have my public affairs officer sitting here me in the room. He's a former uh, uh, Air Force. Uh, so, um, and, and we always make fun of each other, of course. Uh, but, uh, you know, the Air Force, and there's other ranges in the world. Uh, uh, there's uh, there's several on the uh, on the mainland side. Uh, the Air Force has other airspace uh, within the Hawaii region that, that they operate as well. But uh, this is the Navy's range, and so they get the first vote uh, on uh, on the schedule. Um, and it's not every day that the Navy's here, so there's space uh, within the schedule to accommodate other services as required. Um, but uh, uh, if there's a conflict, then uh, we try to manage it here at PMRF. Otherwise, it will go up to higher headquarters, and uh, we let the heavies figure out uh, uh, who uh, who takes precedence on the range. But certainly, the Air Force is a, is a, a valuable contributor uh, to uh, all the things that we do out here on the range. And oftentimes, it's a joint evolution where we have more than just the Navy participating. Um, I also want to add that that uh, our partner nations uh, in the region uh, will come out to PMRF often and hone their skills and test their latest and greatest. So it's not just uh, U.S. Uh, Department of Defense; uh, it's uh, it's our partner nations, which are those relationships obviously are so vitally important. Yeah, just like the joint operations the Navy does. Uh... Uh, on RIMPAC, no, same thing. We, we share and uh, work together, collaborate, uh, get to meet each other, and so forth. It's all, it's all good, and it's all a part of uh, what do you call it, military diplomacy, if you will. Yes, yeah. yes, it is. So um, one thing, you know, you talk about the millions of miles that you cover, looking, looking west, looking to Asia. Uh, it's a fabulous vantage point from the point of view of being aware of what's going on, of, of being, a, if you will, a first line of defense, uh, actually, from Asia. And I, and I wonder if, if what happens at the missile range, um, you know, also relates to the defense of the country um, on an active, an active, you know, capacity and a defense of Hawaii on an active capacity. I mean, should we see you as somebody who would who would protect us at a given point in time if anything was flying overhead and you know such as the 2017 experience with the missiles that weren't missiles uh, <laughs> january 2017 i mean should we should we see the missile range as somebody who would spot that sort of thing um, and who would protect us uh <clears throat> That's not our current mission right now. There may come a time where PMRF has a, has a, a larger role on that. Uh, that is yet to be determined. Um, and uh, there are some assessments currently going on if, uh, if that's possible or if that makes sense to do. Uh, but uh, right now, um, our mission uh, and where our leaders have uh, PMRF doing its thing is in the testing and training uh, that, that keeps us busy enough. And um, when it comes to, you know, defense of Hawaii or, or uh, um, uh, protecting uh, all of our interests here within the state, uh, there are certainly uh, other, other capabilities and capacities not resident here at PMRF that uh, currently can adequately do that. Um, as we move into the future, that uh, that uh, that question, that answer becomes less clear. clear and I, I know there's, uh, uh, you know, we continue to assess where we uh, where we move forward with that. Yeah, I don't I don't know if people realize, but uh, missions of particular facilities change over time. Is this sort of an organic uh, evolution of the um, deployment of? Uh, uh, people and materiel and uh, technology for that matter all over the world and it, I'm sure there's never a day that goes by when something isn't changing in the way the United States uh, positions itself in in the world and I'm sure that um, you know Pacific Missile Range is no exception to that it's it's part of a, a larger network so to speak of uh, our defense capability so indeed it is 
So, um, you know, one thing is uh, Kauai. Kauai is a special place. And Kauai, for example, I'm, I'm just uh, uh, thinking back historically, uh, has had a, a fair amount of activism around, around the crops, which I, I don't think it's too far away from the Pacific Missile Range, um, where, you know, uh, there, was, there, was, there were activists who were opposing, for example, um, uh, uh, the crop, the, the the Monsanto and and the like were growing um, you know uh, uh, um, seed crops um, and uh, testing facilities there and so you have in in Kauai you have a certain amount of uh, what I call it environmental activists and I guess that's still the case at least to some extent although there was a a point in time a few years ago where they were very very active but I wonder if you've been you know involved in in discussions with them in that process uh, of, you know, people who object um, to activities of, you know, multinational companies and for that matter, the military in Kauai. Uh, I, I have not in my tenure here, Jay, and uh, I know that's, uh, that's not necessarily uh, a characteristic of just Kauai, but uh, fortunately I haven't, uh, uh, I haven't, uh, uh, had to experience that, um, but uh, you know, when it comes to kind of our partnership uh, here in Kauai, you know, if, if you were to look at the the four biggest contributors uh, uh, within the state of Hawaii, um, I think you can uh, you can boil them down to uh, um, tourism, uh, Department of Defense, uh, agriculture. And then, uh, um, and then everything that uh, that happens out on the ocean uh, nearby. And so, you know, all those four elements are here with us on the west side of Kauai. Uh, particularly, uh, we have an agreement with the state for agricultural lands to our east. Uh, that's certainly beneficial for us as a testing and training ground. Uh, we have. Uh, uh, on our Makai side, on the ocean, uh, we have uh, tour boats that go by uh, 20 times a day during a normal year, and they coordinate with us to go through uh, with our range operations uh, and get approval. And uh, nine times out of 10, there's not anything going on that would impede their progress. Uh, and then, uh, of course, in the tourism industry, uh, or uh, uh, bringing uh, bring in, uh monies to the economy, uh, PMRF with its employment of about a thousand folks brings about $150 million uh, to the local economy. And then those big tests from the Missile Defense Agency that I was referring to about three or four times a year, they, year, they usually bring about two to 400 folks uh, for, those, uh, for those evolutions. And so that adds a couple more million dollars. Uh, and so, you know that would that would uh, certainly be in um, uh, uh, in the front of my mind uh, uh, as a as a um, companion view to those uh, 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 others who would uh, naysayers about our presence here on the west side. Yeah, and you know you're you've been part of the the fabric of Kauai for a long time. You're a major employer, and as you say, a contributor to the economy of Kauai for a long time. So. You're, you know, you're in, in, a, in an interrelationship that's certainly worth maintaining. Um, and, and talk about that. What are, you know, what is the future for, for uh, Barking Sands uh, Pacific um, uh, Missile Range Facility? Um, is it expanding? Have you seen it expand? Do you, do you find that more and more elements and, and resources and people are, are being uh, assigned and deployed to, to the facility? Uh, is it is it flat? Is it declining? Um, how 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 has uh, COVID affected the deployment of material and and, and technology and and people? Um, to to and what do you what do you see in the future? Uh, I, you know I the, I don't know you you really can't speak about the national plan, but um, what do you see the relevance of of Barking Sands for us and for the country in the future? So we're not. Uh, expanding in a physical sense, uh, uh, you know, our, our role as that crown jewel, like I mentioned, particularly for the Pacific Fleet, uh, is, uh, is going to remain as strong as it is today, is, uh, is it will 
future. And I think that that expansion is going to come from uh, technological advances that we have. There's this thing called live virtual constructive training uh, and uh, being able to do that simulated advanced training with the fleet uh, is going to make them more ready for any kind of future conflict. And so uh, technological advances with capabilities within the range uh, are going to be the uh, wh where we see the evolution here. Um, and so more, uh, more skills, um, uh, more, uh, um, more capability we're be, that we can deliver to the fleet is, uh, is where we see the way forward. Uh, as far as uh, COVID goes and the impact that it's had, uh, we've maintained a steady drumbeat of, uh, of meeting our requirements for our customers. Um, uh, we, we haven't let up. There's been a few uh, external customers that have had to uh, reschedule some events, but that's not because of lack of capability here at PMRF. And so I think the biggest thing, the biggest impact that it's had out here for us is just um, we haven't been able to travel as much as we usually do, whether that's to visit home uh, or uh, uh, go on leave or something like that. But uh, that just uh, gives us more opportunity to enjoy Kauai a little bit more um, and appreciate the times when we can travel, which uh, I don't think is in the far distant future. Sound like a great job, Captain. Um, you know, I mean, if you're talking about a career, this this would be uh, also a, 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 a gem in, in your career, wouldn't it? This would be a great way to advance the, the national interest and the technology that we use to defend ourselves and, and also you know, satisfy uh, your curiosity um, about what is, what is at the front end of things and uh, you know, where, where we are going in terms of national defense. Uh, I would imagine it's, a, it's really attractive for you. And, um, and I, and I, I like your view of it, but I also like to know how you got there so I can do the same thing. So I can go to the same schools, study the same subjects and get your job. What do you think? Uh, I, I tell you what, Jay, I am extremely blessed to be here. Uh, I've, I, I've gained a, a lot more optimism about uh, the course where we're, where we're going and, and uh, uh, where, where our future is with respect uh, to our capabilities within the fleet, uh, no doubt about it. Uh, but I don't know, my philosophy is it, it's better to be lucky than good sometimes. And I, I got in here, but uh, no, my, my background is uh, I joined the Navy to, to become an aviator and I was lucky enough to do that. Uh, and I flew uh, F-18s for a number of years and uh, um, never in my wildest dreams that I did. Number one, I think I'd be in this long. Number two, that uh, I'd have a chance uh, uh, to be stationed here and serve with uh, this phenomenal uh, group that we have here and, and uh, um, live uh, uh, amongst our friends here on the west side of Kauai. So I, yeah, I, I'm myself every day, Jay, and uh, I'm, I, uh, um, it'll, it'll be, uh, it'll be a sad day when I have to leave, but it'll, it'll be one that, uh, uh, I know I'll have to promise myself I come back every year to come see that, that uh, vision of Nihau. <laughs> let me, let me ask you for closing words, Captain, um, you know, uh, what would you like people to think of in terms of the uh, Pacific Missile Range facility? Um, and how would you like to see them sort of characterize it as a part of our islands? Yeah, so I, I think uh, when people think of Pacific Missile Range Facility, um, I think uh, a couple words come to mind. Uh, you know, number one is, uh, is people, uh, just, uh, the, the uh, dedicated uh, group of professionals that we have out here um, serving our country, serving the local community, um, and highly skilled at doing their their uh, their technical work, um, and then uh, the second one is just uh, readiness. Just the the contribution that uh, that PMRF provides due to the dedication and skill set of those people to the readiness of the fleet, uh, the readiness of our um, testing customers, um, and I I think you combine those two things. Uh, I think uh, I think. You understand why uh, why our our uh, leaders call this the crown jewel of the Pacific, 
and it doesn't help to have the most beautiful beaches in the world uh, uh, right on the coastline here, the base. Yeah, it's part of the great tradition between the military and Hawaii. It's a statement of that for sure. Well, thank you very much, Captain. I really appreciate you coming on and sharing with us and answering my questions. And, and uh, as soon as COVID is over, I'm going to pay a, pay a visit to uh, Kauai. And maybe if I have enough uh, gas in my car, I'll come up and see you and say hi. Please do, Jay. We're absolutely privileged to have you. And we'll have you for a, a restaurant here, Shenanigans on base. <laughs> um, but it's been a privilege, uh, privilege day. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Captain. Aloha.